In this video, we're going to cover the different ways that you can join your data in your Power BI reports. We're going to look at how you can join your data in Power Query using merge queries, how you can create relationships between your tables using the model. And we're also going to cover other things like the new semi joins that was just released a few months ago, as well as some other not so very well known features like fuzzy join. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So one of Power BI's most powerful feature is its ability to get data from different kinds of sources and combine them into one table, giving you a good bird's eye view of all of your data. In Power BI, there are two main ways that you can join your data. One of them is using the merged queries in the Power Query Editor, which essentially combines two tables into one. The second one is creating relationships between your tables, which is the more database standardized way of creating connections between two different tables. Now, two options are available for you because there are some advantages and disadvantages when using one or the other. So if you want to learn more about the differences between these two different join types, I covered it in a previous video. So go check it out if you haven't yet. However, today we're just going to focus simply on these two different uh, ways to join your data. So let's start by opening up this report that I created for you guys today. It's already got some data created in it. So I'm just going to guide you through it uh, just so to explain to you first how to join your data using the merge queries option in Power Query. So we have two tables that I want to focus on firstly. So we have the categories table, which is the list of different categories with a category ID as a primary key. And we have the products table, which is again, we have a product ID here, a list of the product names. The product ID is the unique ID for this product. So the primary key. And then we have a category ID here, which connects to the categories to tell us which category this kind of this product belongs to. And let's say you have a scenario in which you need to combine these two tables into one singular table. Maybe you want to just show which categories these products belong to in the same table as another column. A good candidate for you to use is the merge queries option in Power Query. So you would get started by clicking transform data, which will open up Power Query. So Power Query is already here. And we have these two queries that we are looking at. So I'm just going to hide the other queries because we're going to look at those in a little while. And let's say we want to just merge these two. We first need to look for the column that we want to use to combine these two, which will obviously be the category ID because the category ID here would be referring to the category ID here, which will be beverages, for example. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit merge queries here and we're going to merge queries as new. It will just create a new query for us. So here we are. It's uh, asking us to choose which tables we want to merge. So we want to merge the categories and the products table. And we need to now select the matching columns between these two tables, which will be the ID from the categories table and the category ID from the products table. And we're going to leave everything as they are at the moment. And we're going to hit OK. So as, as you can see, it adds a new column here, which is the table that is matching for every single row in the categories table. So we're going to just simply expand it and leave everything as it is. And here we go. So we now have some information about these products and which categories they belong to. There's one thing that you probably would have noticed. There is something missing here. So we if we go to the products table here, we can see that there are four products in this list. However, when we merge them in this new query, there is the product that is missing. So the product 
that's missing is Weetabix. So why is that? So first of all, let's have a look at the type of join that we used in this in this new query that we've created, which we left it by default is the left outer join. So to explain it in a little bit of a simpler sense, I created this PowerPoint slide that visualizes your data in a Venn diagram, which is how we typically visualize kind of different join types. So the Venn diagram is essentially two overlapping circles. Each circle represents a table so A, for example, represents the categories table and the B represents the products table. So in this Venn diagram, for example, the overlapping portion of these two circles would be the data that matches between A and B. So the area of the circle A outside of this overlapping bit with B are all of the data that doesn't match with B and vice versa. So the highlighted areas in this Venn diagram basically indicates which data gets returned when you use this join. So in this case, because we're using left outer join, we're getting, first of all, any data that is matching between the two tables. So in this case, we have beverages. So it will bring, it will, it will return us the row one from the products. It will return as row two and three because two exists matching. And then it will re then return three because three is part of the circle A, the, the left table that is not matching. However, four is part of B that doesn't match to anything in the left table. So that's why the Weetabix row is being excluded. If you want to do it the opposite way around where you want to bring all of the products regardless if they have a category or not, you can use the other join type called the right outer. So we're gonna go back to our Power Query here and we're gonna change this to a right outer. And what you will notice is that the result that you will get will be a little bit different. So as you can see, now it gives us the four products from that right table, from the products table, even though it doesn't have a specific category. It also doesn't give us any categories that don't match between the products and the categories table. So that just hopefully helps you visualize kind of what and how these join types affect your results. Now to make our lives a little bit easier, I created a PowerPoint slide just to visualize all of these different join types. And I've also created different joins here just to show you how the results looks like if you choose these types of join. So we looked at the left outer join, which joins it and gets all of the non-matching from the left and right outer is vice versa. We also have the full outer, which basically gets everything, non, both matching and non-matching between the left and the right tables. And then we have the inner join, which is essentially just bringing any of the columns that match between the left and right tables and excludes any that don't have any match. So as you can see, it's only showing us three rows here. The left ante just takes any values from the left table that doesn't match with the right table. So in this case, it's showing us cereals because this one doesn't have any matching products when we did the join. And right ante does the vice versa. So it just shows us any products that don't have a matching categories value from the categories table. Now, apart from this, there are two new join types that has been announced and released a couple of months back in one of the feature updates. These are the semi joins. Now, these semi joins are not necessarily new join types. I mean, they're new in the sense of Power BI in terms of Power BI and using it in Power BI, but semi joins already existed before using when you're using SQL joins before Power BI. So how I imagine semi-joins are essentially 
inner joins, except that it only returns data from one of the tables. And from what I understand, this is purely for performance sake, where you only need data from the one of the tables without really returning data from the other table because you just want to see whatever matches. So if you want to use the semi joins, you won't find this option on the drop down on the UI. Uh, so where you use, choose normally what kind of join you want to use, you will find that there is no semi joins here. So that means that you have to actually manually update it or write it on the mashup query, which is actually not that difficult. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna simply duplicate one of these. I'm just gonna name this one semi left semi. And we're gonna go to source here. Let me see if I remember what the syntax is. So we're gonna change the join kind from the source step where we do the merge. And we're just gonna change this to left semi. And if we go to expanded products, as you can see, it's showing us basically the left table what it matches from the right table, but it's not necessarily returning us the values from the right table. And that's purely because we might not want to, or we might not need to perform any, any calculations on the right table. We just simply want to do the matching. So if you want to do the right semi, we can uh, just duplicate this one. And we're gonna change in the source what kind of join it is. So we're gonna change one to like this. And as you can see, it just returns us any matching tables from the right table, uh, but not actually returning the data from the left table. So before we exit Power Query, I actually want to show you something, which is the fuzzy matching option that you have in Power Query. Not a lot of people know about this, so I thought I'd try to cover it. And I did already cover this in a different video uh, in a little bit more in-depth detail. So if you want to learn more about it, I will link it somewhere in this video. But essentially, fuzzy matching is essentially when you want to match values that are not 100% matching. So usually best practice when you're setting up databases is to create primary keys and foreign keys in your tables so that they are always matching. And this is what you would use as the matching columns between your tables. However, you might find that if you're working with different types of data, your files or your columns may not have these kind of primary keys, but you might want to still join them even if they're not 100% matching. If you use merging queries like we do now, it won't really work that well because the matching needs to match the text 100%. So in this case, if you want to merge data that is not 100% matching, you can use this fuzzy matching option instead. So here we have a table, a list of categories here with the categories that we have in the categories table. But there is a slight difference here. The syntax or how it's written, the, the first case is not capitalized. So if we just do the normal merging, which uh, if we just go and merge it with the categories, as you can see, none of them will match. So you will not get any match on this because the merging needs to be like for like. So to solve this problem, you have this option at the bottom, which is a simple tick box. You can customize this further at the bottom, but you can simply use fuzzy matching to perform this merge. So it will just try to find the best fit for your data. Now we only have three rows of data here, but if you have a bunch more data, this is a lot more useful. So if you hit okay, as you can see, when you expand the categories, it will now try to match like whatever is the best match for what you have joined. So the next way that you can join your data is by using relationships, which is something that you set up in the semantic model. So we're gonna get out of this Power Query editor and we're going to have a look at these two tables that we have just been looking at. So I'm gonna create a new view here the categories and the products table. Now, let's say we want to use these two tables and present them into one table in Power BI. So we want to show the category name and we want to show the products 
name like this. But as you can see, Power BI doesn't understand what the relationship is between these two tables because there's no relationship. So what we need to do is we need to go to the model view, find the columns that are matching between these two tables and create a relationship between them. So we know that the ID and the categories ID need to be joined from these two tables. So we'll simply just drag these two on top. And as you can see, it creates a relationship between these two tables. Now, if we sw switch back to our report view here, as you can see, it's now showing us the products and their respective categories. Even though they belong in different tables, Power BI understands how they're related because of that relationship we've just created. Now, you might find instances where you might want to create multiple relationships between two tables. So in our case, for example, I've created two other tables here that we will uh, will try to use. So we have the date table, which is the usual centralized calendar table that we use. And we have an employees table here, which is simply just listing out the list of employees, their start dates and their end dates. Now, let's say we want to represent the all of the starters that we have in a kind of calendar type format. So in usually what we'll do is we will use or we will use the calendar, our central calendar table as our axis. So we're going to create a relationship between the date and the start date. And this will allow us to use the date or the calendar table. Let's say we want to show year month. And if we now count the number of employees, just drag it in like this. And instead of don't summarize, we'll do a count. It just simply counts how many starters there are for each of these different months in the different uh, years. However, what if you want to show in the same table a count of how many levers that you have? So uh, you might want to count based on the end dates. How would you do that? So when you try to drag or create another relationship between two tables that already have an active relationship, like for example, we'll drag it to the end date, for example, you will notice that it creates an inactive relationship because tables can only have one active relationship at a time. So it will show this relationship in a dotted line, which says that is an inactive relationship. One of the tricks that I use frequently is to use DAX to utilize any inactive relationships such as this, so that we can visualize them easily on our visuals or on our reports. So here we have, for example, we're gonna create a new measure. We're gonna call this one levers. We're gonna start by wrapping it with a calculate. We're going to do a count of our employees. And then on the filter expression, we're going to simply use the use relationship function. So this function simply forces to use an existing relationship and an active relationship between two tables instead of the one that currently exists. So what we're going to do is refer to the first column from the calendar table. So date date. And then on the second column, which is the employees and date. So now what you will have is a measure, which if you drag it in, as you can see, it just gives you the count of the number of levers in the same axis. So pretty useful, right? And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with different ways that you can join your data in your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.